All right, welcome back. Let's start with this example. We have the present value of an amount X in one quarter year is $1,994. What is X if the account has a 6% effective annual discount rate? What is X if the account has an annual 6% simple discount rate? So here we have two different scenarios where we're going to use two different types of discount rates. The first one is going to be an effective annual discount rate, and the second one is going to be an annual simple discount rate. But let's do one at a time and start with our effective annual discount rate. And so if we do that, we'll know that D is equal to 0.06, right? That is the effective annual discount rate of 6%. And so in this particular problem, we are told that the present value of an amount deposited is 1,994. So we know that our present value is equal to $1,994. And we are looking for an amount that we deposited X, right? We don't know what X is equal to. And so we can set up an equation here using our present value formula, right? So we know that the present value is equal to some amount that we start with, right? So that's gonna be X. And then we multiply by our present value factor. Now in this case, we're working with an annual discount rate. So we need to use the discount rate present value factor rather than a normal interest rate present value factor. So that in this case is going to be one minus D to the power of T because this is an effective annual discount rate which means it's compounded, not a simple discount rate, which is what we'll work with in the second part of this problem. Now we need one more thing before we can solve this equation. We also need to know what our time period is. And we see that the present value of an amount X in one quarter year is that amount we wrote down earlier. So it's a quarter of a year. And so in this case, our time in years is going to be equal to one fourth which is a quarter of a year. And since our rate here, our discount rate is an effective annual rate, it's important to keep our amount of time in years. So the period of our discount rate matches up with the units of our time. So now if we plug in all those values we know, we will have that 1994 is equal to X times one minus 0 0.06 to the one fourth power. And so if we plugged this quantity into our calculator, if we took one minus 0 0.06 to the one fourth power, we would have that 1,994 is equal to X times 0.98465. And there's some more decimals there, but I'm gonna round off. And then if we divided both sides by that amount we just found, we'll isolate our X and then we'll know what X is going to be equal to. And so if we do that, X is going to be equal to $2,025.08. And so that would be the answer or the value of X in this case with an effective annual discount rate. But what would that X be if the account has an annual 6% simple discount rate? Well, we're going to have a very similar setup. The only thing that's going to change is our present value factor here. And so what's gonna happen, instead of having this one minus D to the T power, this is what we're going to have. We're gonna have the present value is equal to X times one minus D times T and that's the end of our quantity, right? So the only difference here is what this present value factor looks like. In this case, our discount rate was compounded, so we had the power of T, and in this case, it is a simple rate, so now we multiply our discount rate by the amount of years or the amount of time. But everything else is the same. Our present value is the same, our amount of time, one quarter year is the same, and our 6% is also the same. So we can plug in those same values and we'll have 1994 is equal to X times one minus 0 0.06 times one fourth. And if we simplify this quantity, we take one minus 0 0.06 times one fourth, we'll have 1994 is equal to X times 0.985. And then just like we did over here, if we divide both sides by this quantity, 0.985, we will have that X is equal to $2,024.37. And so that would be the value of X if we had a simple discount rate rather than an effective annual discount rate. And you can see that we got two different values for that X in each of those cases. They're not going to be the same. So it's important that you realize the difference between a compounded or an effective annual discount rate and an annual simple discount rate. Let's look at another example. All right, so for our next example, we have that if the nominal discount rate convertible monthly is 36%, what is the effective monthly discount rate, the effective annual discount rate, and the effective annual interest rate? So we've got a lot of different things going on here. So let's first write down what we know. We know that we have a nominal discount rate convertible monthly 
and it is 36%. So what that means is we have a discount rate D that is convertible monthly. So that means our M in this case is equal to 12, right? Because there are 12 months in a year. So that means that we can write 12 here and that represents our nominal discount rate convertible monthly. And that is equal to 36%, which is the same as 0.36 in decimal format. And so in order to find the effective monthly discount rate, it's gonna be just like finding your effective monthly interest rate given a nominal interest rate. So all we have to do is take our nominal discount rate here and divide it by the amount of periods M, right? Because this nominal discount rate is convertible monthly and we wanna know the effective monthly discount rate, all we have to do is just take that rate and divide it by the number of months or what our M is equal to. And so this is going to be equal to 0.36 divided by 12, and that's going to be equal to 0.03. And so this is our effective monthly discount rate. So I'm just going to underline this so that we know that that is what this rate is. So now if we wanna know the effective annual discount rate, that's going to be a little bit different. That's going to require a different formula. So just like we have a formula to convert from a nominal annual interest rate to an effective annual interest rate, we also have a formula to convert from a nominal discount rate to an effective annual discount rate. So in this case, our formula is going to be one minus D is equal to one minus the nominal discount rate convertible for a certain amount of periods, M, and that will be divided by M, and that will be taken to the power of M. That whole quantity is to the power of M. And so now we can use this to solve for this discount rate, which is going to be our effective annual discount rate, right? What we just wrote here is the conversion formula from an annual nominal discount rate to an effective annual discount rate. So let's plug in our values and we'll have that this is going to become one minus D is equal to one minus 0.36 divided by 12 to the 12th power. And so if we were to evaluate this in our calculator, we would then have that one minus D is equal to 0 0.693842 and I round it off there. And then if we were to solve for D in this case by subtracting this one and then negating both sides, we would find that D is equal to 0 0.3062. And that is going to be our effective annual discount rate given this nominal discount rate convertible monthly of 36%, right? We used this conversion formula that we learned in our lesson and we plugged in the values we knew and then solved for D, which is our effective annual discount rate. And then finally, we wanna find the effective annual interest rate. So we found the effective annual discount rate. Now we wanna know the effective annual interest rate. And so since we already know what our effective annual discount rate is, we can actually use this to find our effective annual interest rate because we know that they are related with this formula. We know that D or the discount rate is equal to I divided by one plus I. And so if we plug in our value of D here, we are going to have 0 0.3062 is equal to I divided by one plus I. And then if I were to multiply both sides by this one plus I, we'd have 0 0.3062 plus 0 0.3062 times I, and that will be equal to I. And then we can combine our like terms by subtracting this term with I in it over to this side, and we will have that 0 0.3062 is equal to 0.6938I. And then if we divided both sides by this value here, this 0 0.6938, we would isolate our I, and we would then know what it is equal to, which again is our effective annual interest rate. And so then if we do that, we will find that I is equal to 0.4412. And that is our effective annual interest rate given that our nominal discount rate convertible monthly was 36%. So it was helpful that we already had to find this effective annual discount rate, but if we weren't told to find that, this would have actually been the best way to do it, would be to convert your nominal discount rate convertible monthly to an effective annual discount rate and then take your discount rate and find your effective interest rate. And so this is going to be a common method that you will use when you're given a discount rate, but a problem might require you to find or use a normal interest rate. So just keep that in mind as you encounter more problems in the future. Let's look at one more example. So for our last example, we have Seth deposits $250 into an account 
A year and a half later, his deposit is worth $400. What was Seth's nominal discount rate convertible semi-annually? So this one's a little tricky, but I think we can do it fairly easily. So for one thing, we know that Seth is making a deposit of $250. So we know that his initial deposit, which I like to label with C, is going to be equal to 250. And we know that the future value of that deposit is 400. So future value equals 400. And so then let's take a note of how long this took, right? Our time in this case is going to be a year and a half. So in terms of years, this is 1.5. So that is in years. And then of course we want to find the rate of interest, which in this case is going to be a nominal discount rate convertible semi-annually. So what we're looking for here is a discount rate where the number of periods is two, right? Because it's semi-annual and there are two semi-annual periods in one year. And so this is what we are looking for. And so the way I would recommend doing this is to first find our effective semi-annual rate, right? So if we have our semi-annual discount rate, we can find our nominal discount rate convertible semi-annually. And to do that, we need to set up our future value equation. So we know that the future value is equal to our initial deposit C times our accumulation factor. Now remember, it's not going to be one minus D to the T power because discount rates work differently than normal interest rates in future value and present value scenarios. Instead, it's going to be one over one minus D to the t power or the number of years or in this case we're actually going to be working with semi-annual periods but we'll get to that right so this is our future value formula since we're working with a discount rate and if this part is confusing you i do recommend that you watch our lesson on this topic where i do go over why this is the case okay so then let's plug in the values that we know so we will have that 400 is equal to 250 times 1 over 1 minus d to the power of t now what is that power going to be right i said that we want to solve for a semi-annual discount rate first and then we'll convert that to a nominal semi-annual discount rate well we were told that a year and a half later his deposit was worth 400 dollars and so that was in years, 1.5 years. Well, if we multiply that by two, then we will have the amount of semi-annual periods, right? There are two semi-annual periods for every year. So if we take 1.5, multiply it by two, then we will have three semi-annual periods. So then that means our power here will be three. And when we solve for this D, it's going to be an effective semi-annual discount rate. So now let's solve this. If we divide both sides by 250, we will have 1.6 is equal to one over one minus D to the third power. And if we multiplied both sides by this denominator, we would then have 1.6 times one minus D to the third power is equal to one. And then I'm going to want to divide both sides by this 1.6. So that's going to give us 1 minus d to the third power is equal to 1 divided by 1.6, which is going to be 0.625. And then we're going to want to take the cubed root of both sides. And that's the same as taking both sides to the 1 third power. And so if you do that, we will then have 1 minus d is equal to 0.8. 5, 4, 9, and there's some more decimals there as well. And then if we solve for D here by subtracting 1 and then negating that answer because this D is still going to be negative, then we would find that D is equal to 0.145. And there are some other decimals, but I'm going to stop there. And so this right here is our effective semi-annual discount rate. So all we have to do to convert this to our nominal discount rate convertible semi-annually is to remember what the relationship between those two rates is. Remember that if we take this nominal discount rate and divide it by the number of periods two, that would give us an effective semi-annual rate. So if we wanna go from the semi-annual effective rate to the nominal discount rate convertible semi-annually, we have to do the opposite. So in order to get this rate, we have our effective semi-annual rate, which is right here. If we multiply it by two, then we have our nominal discount rate. So we multiply it by two, then we will have that our nominal discount rate convertible semi-annually is equal to 0.29. And that will be our final answer to this problem. All right, so that's all I had for this example's video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments below and I will answer them. But if you don't have any questions, that is all I have for now. So I will see you next time.